the Social Security Law. The Social Security Law was enacted under the policy of the state to establish, develop, and promote a sound and viable tax-exempt social security system suitable to the needs of the people throughout the Philippines and provide meaningful protection to members and their beneficiaries against hazards of disability, sickness, maternity, old age, death, and other contingencies resulting in loss of income or financial benefits. Let's mention first those who are not covered by the SSS. 1. Services where there's no employer-employee relationship. 2. Service performed in the employ of the Philippine government or any of its instrumentalities and agencies. 3. Service performed in the employ of foreign governments or international organizations or their wholly owned instrumentality. 4. Temporary employees, if excluded by regulation of the Social Security Commission. That means if there's no regulation exempting temporary employees from SSS coverage, temporary employees are covered because there's no way of telling whether the said employees belong to a group or class designated by regulation of the Social Security Commission as exempt. Compulsory coverage. SSS coverage is uh, compulsory upon 1. All employers. 2. All employees not over 60 years of age. 3. Domestic helpers. 4. Self-employed persons, including professionals, partners, and single proprietors of businesses, professional athletes, coaches, trainers, and jockeys, actors and actresses, directors, scriptwriters, and news correspondents who do not fall within the definition of the term employee, and individual farmers and fishermen. Number five, overseas Filipino workers, whether land-based or sea-based. Note the SSS coverage of overseas Filipino workers. Manning agencies are considered as employers of sea-based OFWs. They are jointly and uh, severally liable with their principals with respect to the civil liabilities incurred for violating the Social Security Act of 2018. On the other hand, land-based OFWs are considered in the same manner as self-employed persons. The Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Migrant Workers, and all its attached agencies involved in deploying OFWs for employment abroad are mandated to negotiate bilateral labor agreements with the OFWs host countries to ensure that the employers of land-based OFWs pay the required SSS contributions. In which case, these land-based OFWs shall no longer be considered in the same manner as self-employed persons in this act. Instead, they shall be considered as compulsorily covered employees, with the employer and employee sharing in contributions that shall be provided for in the bilateral labor agreements and their implementing administrative agreements. Upon termination of their employment overseas, OFWs may continue to pay contributions on a voluntary basis to maintain their rights to full benefits. Note the concept of voluntary SSS coverage. Spouses who devote full-time to managing the household and family affairs may be covered by the SSS on a voluntary basis unless they are engaged in a vocation or employment which is subject to mandatory coverage. Note the concept of beneficiaries and dependents. Beneficiaries are the following. Number one, the dependent spouse until he or she remarries. Number two, the dependent, legitimate, legitimated, or legally adopted, and illegitimate children who shall be the primary beneficiaries of the member, provided that the dependent, illegitimate children shall be entitled to 50% of the share of legitimate, legitimated, or legally adopted children. Provided further, that in the absence of dependent, legitimate, legitimated, or legally adopted children of the member, his or her dependent, illegitimate children shall be entitled to 100% of the benefits. In their absence, the dependent parents shall be the secondary beneficiaries of the member. In the absence of the foregoing persons, any other person designated by the member as his or her secondary beneficiary. When the law mentions dependents, this is the context. The dependents shall be the following. 1. The legal spouse entitled by law to receive support from the member. Number 2. The legitimate, legitimated or legally adopted and illegitimate child who is unmarried, not gainfully employed, and has not reached the age of uh, 21 years of age. Or, if over 21 years of age, he is congenitally or while still a minor has been permanently incapacitated and incapable of self-support, physically or mentally. 
And number three, the parent who is receiving regular support from the member. Note the SSS benefits. Number one, the maternity leave benefit. Two, sickness benefit. Three, permanent partial disability benefit. Four, permanent total disability benefit. Five, unemployment or involuntary separation benefit. Six, retirement benefit. Seven, death benefit. And eight, funeral benefit. Remember that the government ensures the solvency of the SSS and guarantees that these SSS benefits are paid without diminution. Maternity leave benefit is available to female SSS members, married or unmarried, who give birth, suffer miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy. It can be availed of regardless of frequency of pregnancy, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy. The maternity leave benefit to be paid by the SSS is equivalent to 100% of the average daily salary credit. It will be paid in advance by the employer subject to reimbursement by the SSS. Female SSS members can avail of the SSS maternity leave benefits if they have 1. Paid at least 3 monthly contributions in the 12-month period immediately preceding the semester of her childbirth, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy. And number two, notify their employer of their pregnancy and the probable date of childbirth. The sickness benefit is 90% uh, of the average daily salary credit to be paid in advance by the employer subject to reimbursement by the SSS. SSS members can avail of the sickness benefit if they have number one, paid at least three monthly contributions in the 12-month period immediately preceding the semester of sickness or injury. Number two, been confined for more than three days in a hospital or elsewhere with the approval of the SSS. Three, exhausted their paid company sick leave benefit. And four, notify the employer or the SSS in the case of self-employed members of the fact of his sickness or injury within five calendar days after the start of his confinement. The sickness benefit cannot be paid for more than 120 days in one calendar year. It cannot be paid for more than 240 days on account of the same confinement. Note that the unused portion of the sickness benefit cannot be carried forward and added to the total number of compensable days allowable in the subsequent year. Permanent Partial Disability Benefit This is available to SSS members who suffer partial loss of the use of any part of his body, specifically loss of a finger, a hand, an arm, a foot, a leg, one or both ears, hearing on one or both ears, or sight of one eye. The permanent partial disability benefit is in the form of 1. A monthly pension, depending on the body part that was lost. If the member has paid 36 contributions prior to the semester of disability or 2. A percentage of uh, the lump sum benefit if the member has not paid 36 contributions prior to the semester of disability. If the SSS member retires or dies while enjoying permanent partial disability benefits, his disability pension shall cease upon his retirement or death. The permanent total disability benefit is available to SSS members who suffer complete loss of sight of both eyes, loss of two limbs at or above the ankle or wrist, permanent complete paralysis of two limbs, brain injury resulting in incurable imbecility or insanity, or such cases as determined and approved by the SSS. The permanent total disability benefit is in the form of 1. A monthly pension for SSS members who have paid at least 36 monthly contributions prior to the semester of disability. 2. Lump sum for SSS members who have not paid 36 monthly contributions. If the SSS member dies while enjoying permanent total disability benefits, his primary beneficiaries as of the date of the disability shall be entitled to receive his monthly pension. If he has no primary beneficiaries and he dies within 60 months or 5 years from the start of his monthly pension, his secondary beneficiaries shall be entitled to the balance of the 5-year guaranteed monthly pension, excluding the dependent's pension, to be paid in lump sum. The SSS Unemployment or Involuntary Separation Benefit is available to employees who have involuntarily separated from employment, such as retrenchment, redundancy, closure of establishment, or disease. In short, the termination of employment does not arise from the fault of the employee. 
The SSS unemployment or involuntary separation benefit is available to members who are not 60 years old and have paid at least 36 monthly contributions, 12 months of which should be in the 18-month period immediately preceding the involuntary unemployment or separation. The SSS unemployment or involuntary separation benefit is in the form of monthly cash payments equivalent to 50% of the average monthly salary credit for a maximum of two months. Unemployment or involuntary separation benefits can be claimed once every three years. In case of concurrence of two or more compensable contingencies, only the highest benefit shall be paid. The SSS retirement benefit can be availed of by the SSS member if they have reached the age of 60 years for optional retirement or 65 years for compulsory retirement. The SSS retirement benefit is in the form of 1. A lifetime monthly pension for SSS members who have paid at least 120 monthly contributions, that is 10 years, prior to the semester of retirement. 2. A lump sum equal to the total contributions paid for SSS members who have not paid at least 120 monthly contributions prior to the semester of retirement. The SSS member has the option to receive his first 18 monthly pension lump sum discounted at a preferential rate of interest to be determined by the SSS. The monthly pension of an SSS member who retires at the age of 60 years will be suspended if he is reemployed. If the retired SSS member dies, his primary beneficiaries as of the date of his retirement shall receive the monthly pension. If there are no primary beneficiaries, the secondary beneficiaries shall receive in lump sum the balance of the total monthly pension for the five-year guaranteed period excluding the dependent's pension. Where monthly pension is payable on account of death, permanent total disability or retirement, dependents pension equivalent to 10% of the monthly pension or 250 pesos, whichever is higher, shall also be paid for each dependent child conceived on or before the date of the contingency but not exceeding 5, beginning with the youngest and without substitution, provided that where there are legitimate and illegitimate children, the former shall be preferred. The SSS Death Benefit if the SSS member has paid at least 36 monthly contributions prior to the semester of death, the primary beneficiaries will be entitled to monthly pension. What if there's no primary beneficiary? The death benefit shall be paid to the secondary beneficiaries in the form of a lump sum equivalent to 36 times the monthly pension. How about if the SSS member has not paid at least 36 monthly contributions prior to the semester of death? The primary or secondary beneficiaries shall be entitled to a lump sum equivalent to whichever is higher between the monthly pension times the number of monthly contributions or 12 times the monthly pension. The funeral benefit is payable in cash or in kind. It is available even if at the time of death the member was permanently totally disabled or has retired. 